Big Sandy is one of those Texas towns they always talk about passing through with the old saying, if you blink, you'll miss it. Next time you travel Highway 80 in East Texas, keep your eyes open when you roll into Big Sandy. You might just catch a glimpse of some Texas history. Texas is full of lost history. From lost cemeteries to abandoned buildings. From the infamous to the obscure. Hitch a ride and travel across the Lone Star State, looking for hints of Texas' colorful past, our lost history. This is Expedition Texas, and we're gonna find it. When you stop off in Big Sandy, Texas, it doesn't take you long to hear a good story. After all, this was the world headquarters for the Worldwide Church of God, a radio ministry that became an empire with a sprawling campus just outside of town. That campus is now called the Alert Academy and is a leading training ground for police forces from around the country. There are also several historic buildings in Big Sandy. I was in town to play the Expedition Texas Acoustic Tour at the Big Sandy Music Hall, which is housed in the old 1920s First Baptist Church building in Big Sandy. The congregation has since moved out to a new location, but the building is still there. Linda Baggett and her family attended church there up until the congregation moved. There were nine charter members and they chartered the First Baptist Church. Um, the building was initially where the intersection of 155 and Highway 80 is where building, and they started with meeting with the Methodist Church in town, so which was not uncommon for a long time ago. Linda's family had attended church in this building for years, so there are a lot of memories in those old pews. We had all grown up here, and everyone went to church with their friends. So we met up with Linda to show us around the old First Baptist Church building. So we're here at the old Big Sandy First Baptist Church, and I love it. We're right inside the front door here, and as you walk in, it's where you hang your coat up when you yes. come to church, right? Hats. Definitely. Hats, coats. All that. Those have seen a lot. I went to churches like this as a kid, and I love that when you walk in, there's an old hat and coat rack where you can hang those things up on your way in to go into the sanctuary. 1920 what? 1922. Really? When the building, wow. this building was constructed. Bob, this is the sanctuary of the First Baptist Church in Big Sandy. Beautiful room, and I love the stained glass windows. Pews are beautiful, they're curved, and just beautiful wood. All the woodwork, you can see back here, the hands where they've been on them. The old pews, the hardwood floors, all original. So did you know anyone that went to church here, Linda? My, fam my husband's family grew up here. Okay. His mom, um, Past this past January at 92 and she went here all her life. And then we went up on the stage where the choir loft used to be, then up above that was the old baptistry. Oh. Yes, this is the baptistry. Look at that. It's beautiful. It is. Hey, where's all the water? Oh, well you have to drain the water between baptisms. Oh, okay. All right. It gets a little chilly. How many kids are you dropping on? Oh, only one. Only today. one, only really? One, okay. yes. Hey, wait a minute, I'm back out. Are you talking about me? Yeah. <laughs> You're watching Expedition Texas, sponsored in part by the following. The city of Canton, Texas, home of the world famous First Monday Trade Days. Learn more at visitcantontx.com. Gun Barrel Hot Sauce, mild, medium, and triple X hot. Try it if you think you're Texan enough. Available at Brookshire's, Kroger, Whole Foods, and other fine stores. The East Texas Oil Museum. Step back in time and relive the East Texas oil boom with a visit to Boomtown, USA on the campus of Kilgore College. Visit Palestine, Texas, home of the Texas State Railroad and the Texas Dogwood Trail Celebration. Palestine offers stately homes, scenic drives, and true Southern hospitality. 
What started more than a century ago as a flea market has become home to the most exciting shopping experience anywhere. First Monday Trade Days in Canton, Texas bring shoppers face to face with 7,000 vendors from all over the country selling everything imaginable. Couple that with the small town hospitality of local businesses and you have a good reason to visit every month. The market is held Thursday through Sunday, the weekend before the first Monday of every month, rain or shine. Plus, there's lots to see and do every day in Canton. Learn more at visitcantontx.com. Saying you're a real Texan is a mighty big claim. There's an easy way to tell who you're dealing with. Gun Barrel Hot Sauce is real Texas hot sauce, and their triple X can't be handled by just any old cowboy. Take a bite. You ain't really from Texas, but Gun Barrel Hot Sauce is. And any supermarket that's worth a darn has it on their salsa aisle. So go ahead and try it if you think you're Texan enough. You can't help but feel the authenticity of it. People fall in love even before they get here. Then they arrive and they see this history that they want to try to be a part of and revive. It's ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. It's that silent excellence that, that you expect at, a, at that hotel caliber. They feel like they've gone to a whole nother place. Believe it or not, there was a time when East Texas was just quiet, rural country towns separated by miles of pine trees and farmland. Then came the oil boom. Relive the oil boom in East Texas at the East Texas Oil Museum, located on the campus of Kilgore College. Visit Boomtown USA, a life-size diorama of small town East Texas, where you can literally walk through history and learn all about the oil boom. East Texas Oil Museum, Highway 259 in Kilgore. We're in Big Sandy, Texas, exploring the old First Baptist Church building. The building dates back to the 1920s and recently came to be used for a much different purpose, music. More about that later. But right now, we're exploring the more recent additions to the church building. There were some stairs that if you were just sitting in the church, you probably wouldn't even notice them over there, but those stairs go down uh, rather steep into another part of the building altogether, the old fellowship hall. We're coming into the fellowship hall. There have been many, many lunches, dinners, uh, after school activities. Uh, we've had uh, fifth quarter after the football game. Yes. Kids were down. We had this room filled with kids last year, ping pong and all sorts of twister and all sorts of games yeah. and hot dogs. Uh, the ladies on Friday morning would meet, they would bring lunch and they would sit here and quilt. They would not have sewing machines to quilt on. They would have quilting frames and their quilts were made by hand. This, this is the room where the church, ladies at the church would set up dinner. Next, we went to another very important part of the church building that wasn't added until nearly 20 years after its original construction. This was initially the pastor's office. This is part of the addition in the 40s. So this is where folks would come talk to the pastor. Huh? This is the pastor's office, yes. Sister Loretta is singing off key and we got to do something about it. Exactly. Next, Linda took us into some Sunday school rooms that were added in the 1950s. And last but not least, the place you could drop off those noisy kiddos right before church, the nursery. Bob, this is where the nursery was. This is what, it's got the yes. little half doors and everything. It's got the little half door so we yeah. can... Um, come in here and the kids, can, the kids can't get out. The but, kids can't get out, but the parents can come and the grandparents mm -hmm. come check on them, make sure everything's them. going on. So this would be like draw off. How many kids are you dropping off today, Oh, Linda? only one. Only today. one, really? Only one, okay. yes. Hey, hey, wait a minute, I'm back out. Are you talking about me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to go play with my toys. Yep. <laughs> In the nursery room where we were is where the Big Sandy News Journal operates now. It's a local newspaper which is owned and operated by the owners of the building, Andrew and Kate Kirby. We were in there talking to them and a story came up about a local legend named Overland Jack. He used these to walk with to keep him off the ground. He stayed across the street from our building here. There's an empty lot. 
sure. Oh, this is really cool. Expedition Texas, powered by Sudden Link. What is Sudden Link to go? It's TV you take with you. It's your favorite shows online. It's the biggest networks on your laptop computer. And it's free to Sudden Link customers. What's Sudden Link to go? It's the easy way to get complete watching freedom anywhere you have a Wi Fi connection. And it's another way. Sudden Link just keeps getting better. Start streaming TV to your laptop today. Everybody knows the Daniel Boone's you'll get some of the best food around. We got chicken fried steak, grilled pork chops, and fried fish to name a few. But wouldn't it be great if food from Daniel Boone's just fell out of the sky? That'd make some kind of impact, wouldn't it? Daniel Boone's, now delivered to your door. Just go to DanielBoone's.net or PRDTyler.com. We'd be happy to serve you at our table or send it out to yours. At Daniel Boots, we'll feed you and feed you good. You're watching Expedition Texas. We're in Big Sandy, Texas. We originally set out to explore the First Baptist Church building, which sits on Highway 80. After exploring the old church, now operating as the Big Sandy Music Hall and the local newspaper offices, we learned about a local legend called Overland Jack. Jack's real name was John Rose. He also earned the nickname the Goat Man. There are good reasons for both names. As a young man, John tried to hop a freight train, only to fall beneath it, losing both legs. John survived and fashioned a small wagon led by a team of goats. Together, the goat man and his team traveled all over the United States, earning the name Overland Jack. But he called Big Sandy, Texas home. He was a watch repairman. Um, I've talked to several of my friends around town who grew up in here and they remember him selling watches, their parents taking watches to them, uh, to him to be repaired and um, or to buy watches. He sold postcards uh, and he, like I say, wanted no charity whatsoever. He made his own way. He lived modestly. He had um, a wagon and it was, it was a small wagon. Um, and he went miles and miles traveling in that. Um, and for him to for him to get around with no legs, he had crutches. And when we think of crutches these days, we think of crutches that are very long and everything. Well, Mr. Rose had no legs, so he had basically blocks of wood with handles, and that's how he got around. He was an amazing man. The folks in Big Sandy have been trying to put together a museum for a number of years, and they were able to gather some of Overland Jack's original items that haven't been seen by the public in years. Hi, are you Mary? Yes, I'm Mary. Hi. I'm Hi, Paul nice to meet you. So I understand, and I see a collection of stuff here. I'm yes. guessing this has to do with Big Sandy legend Overland Jack, and you can tell us about yes, it. Yes, right? um, yes, I can. So who was this guy, Overland Jack? Well, he was a Big Sandy legend. He um, traveled all over the country. This was his home base. He had a wagon with six goats that he traveled all over the United States. Besides, I guess, obviously being seen around town back in the day with the goats parked yes. outside of the, the local diner or whatever, it, it was probably a sight mm -hmm. to see the wagon being pulled right. by goats. Yes. And then he had a unique way of getting around. Right, yes, he did. These are his actual crutches. Um, that he used these to walk with to keep him off the ground. They have a tire tread on the bottom, huh. and, and he handmade these himself. Wow. So, so it's and, like using uh, shoes, but for your hands. Yes, so he would walk like this 
using wow. these to keep him off the ground. Okay, so tell me um, what some of these things are we're looking at Okay, here. he did odd jobs when he was traveling all over, and this is his fix-it shop box. Really? And yes. And see right there it says fix-it shop, and it has uh, he did pictures of a gun, clocks, locks. watches, and spectacles. Oh, wow. Yeah, and sharpened knives, I believe, yeah. and scissors. And the inside there's just little compartments. I guess where he kept all of his yeah, stuff. Yeah, this here would be for holding uh, where the, the, the lenses for the glasses. Right. you got yes. the different levels marked there and then clamps for other things up here which right. are clothes pins, I guess. Yes. Huh. That's awesome. I guess he built this box himself. Yes, apparently. Um, this is his actual hat band. It has several different trinkets on it that he made. Um, wow. That's a knife, horseshoe, boots. Spurs. Uh, spurs, his gun. Yeah. So. Look at that. That's awesome. So those are his, that was his and Those are all handmade trinkets All handmade that he, made. that he made, yes. And then, of course, we have his crutches. Yeah. Here. Um, there were postcards made. You could buy them, I think, for a nickel that tells his story of where he's traveled and uh, about were his Were these put out during his lifetime? I mean, yes. was he, was he mm -hmm. aware of his celebrity is legend status i kind of think so because really? there are several people have these you can find them different places <laughs> and then this is his overland jack is his family bible or his bible really? all of these things have been sitting in storage and hopefully soon they'll be available for people to come see along with the story of overland jack because he was definitely an interesting character so when did overland jack pass away he died in 1962. And since he's sort of a big Sandy legend, I guess uh, growing up, did you ever encounter? Yes, I did when I was a very small child with my grandfather. We, I come to town and he stayed across the street from our building here. There's an empty lot. Yeah. And he would bring his goats and park his wagon there and do his business and shopping in town. And there was one other important place we needed to see, the grave of Overland Jack. You're watching Expedition Texas, sponsored in part by the following. Kilgore Main Street, food, fun, and fashion on the downtown streets of Kilgore, Texas. Visit www.kilgoremainstreet.com. The East Texas Oil Museum. Step back in time and relive the East Texas oil boom with a visit to Boomtown, USA on the campus of Kilgore College. Visit Palestine, Texas, home of the Texas State Railroad and the Texas Dogwood Trail Celebration. Palestine offers stately homes, scenic drives, and true Southern hospitality. Believe it or not, there was a time when East Texas was just quiet, rural country towns separated by miles of pine trees and farmland. Then came the oil boom. Relive the oil boom in East Texas at the East Texas Oil Museum, located on the campus of Kilgore College. Visit Boomtown USA, a life-size diorama of small town East Texas, where you can literally walk through history and learn all about the oil boom. East Texas Oil Museum, Highway 259 in Kilgore. can't help but feel the authenticity of it. People fall in love even before they get here. Then they arrive and they see this history that they want to try to be a part of and revive. It's ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. It's that silent excellence that, that you expect at, a, at that hotel caliber. They feel like they've gone to a whole nother place. You're watching Expedition Texas.
We're in Big Sandy, Texas. Originally, we came to town to explore the old First Baptist Church building, but there was another story we needed to hear as well, the story of Overland Jack. We've heard the story as related to us by locals, but a local songwriter had his own take on the tale of Overland Jack. Roger Loftus remembers and tells the story in a song. Born in Virginia, 1888, traveled 30,000 miles, over 19 states, kept two six-shooters, rifle and back of his wagon pulled by gold, tells of Overland Jack. 600 pounds was his camping load, 10 miles a day his little wagon road. Two quarts of grain a day's gold was fed. Jack was the book most folks never read. Overland Jack, Overland Jack, lost both his legs on the railroad track. In Big Sandy, Texas, he was quite a sight. Question no problems is Overland Jack. Known as the gold man, I saw him myself Riding in his wagon like an old fairy tale Sold his picture postcards, ten cents each Three for a quarter, no charity please Six hundred pounds was his camping load Ten miles a day, a little wagon road Two quarts of grain a day's gold was fed. Jack was a book most folks never read. Overland Jack, Overland Jack, lost both his legs on the railroad track. In Big Sandy, Texas, he was quite a sight. Question no problems as Overland Jack. In Big Sandy, Texas, he was quite a sight. Question no problems as over in Jack. And there was one other important place we needed to see the grave of Overland Jack. Kate Kirby have turned the old First Baptist Church building into the Big Sandy Music Hall and they have weekly shows there. And I was in town to play the Expedition Texas Acoustic Tour at the Big Sandy Music Hall. What an honor it was to play this historic building. Here's a little bit of the fun that we had there. I know all I know now and I've always wanted to do this somehow too. See up above and know that I must go to But uh, here's what we're going to wrap up with. It's called It's All Over Now. It's been years since I traveled down this road But the last time I had a heavier load I still remember very well the song that I was humming And on my back's the guitar I was strumming 
I'm like the prodigal son, I've come back home as mama cries tears of joy. And daddy says, I'm mighty proud of my boy. Yeah, the years and tears they brought them pain, no, that I can't deny. And every wrinkle and gray hair will tell you exactly why. But it's all over now. It's all over now I've made my return so they can burn all the memories of when I walked out Cause it's all over now Hugs my neck and squeezes me real tight And daddy asks if I'm doing alright I tell him yeah I can't complain Guess I'm doing well But let me tell you that life on the road is hell He says that dog that used to run with you Is buried out back in the yard and before Grandma died, she read your get well card Oh, it's funny how in just a couple of years The whole world changes around But that's okay, I'm home for good And it's all over now It's all over now It's all over now memories of when I walked out cause it's all over now yeah I made my return so they can burn all the memories of when I walked out cause it's all Thank y'all so much for coming out tonight. I really appreciate you listening to my music. Thank you so much. On your next trip down Highway 80, be sure not to blink. You might miss some of the great stories in Big Sandy like the old First Baptist Church or the story of Overland Jack. Maybe someday soon that museum will be opened and ready and you can stop in and learn even more. It kind of makes you want to slow down a bit and take a look around East Texas and pay attention to the lost history that's all around us.